this video on lecture notes section 4.5 um, hyperbolic functions this is for math 1431 that's calculus 1 at the University of Houston um, so this topic I want to be really clear is referenced um, in a future math course or at least it can be in uh, 1432 calc 2 and this topic of hyperbolic functions can come up in another course, Calc 3. And it turns out these are famous functions that can pop up all over the place. Uh, so if your journeys through math or, say, physics take you far enough, you'll probably see these guys popping up again. Um, for us, though, I want to point out there will be some homework and quiz questions involving this section, but this material will not be on any exams. So I know we're all on a sort of shorter schedule because of all the chaos happening this semester, um, so I want to alert you to this fact so that you can strategically study and prepare for these exams a little bit better. But okay, let's get to what a hyperbolic um, trig function is. And so we have two main ones, just like we have two main trig functions. The first one is called the hyperbolic cosine, and it's cosine, but with an H at the end for hyperbolic, and it is pronounced cosh. And this is e to the x plus e to the ne negative x all over 2. And there's a lot of different ways you could rewrite this. You could say, oh, that's just 1 half e to the x plus 1 over e to the x, because that's what e to the negative x is. right? In either way, it's kind of a, an average of the exponential function e to the x and the reciprocated exponential function 1 over e to the x, or e to the negative x. And there's, a good re there's, there's good reasons why we would think of this function as being kind of like a different type of cosine. Um, th just like this is a new type of cosine, the hyperbolic sine function, pronounced cinch, is defined in a similar way. It's defined as e to the x minus e to the negative x, all divided by 2. So you could write it like this if you wanted to. These are all good ways to write it. Um, and here's the important thing about these these sorts of expressions, at least from the point of view of a calc student. These functions are pretty easy for us to work with because they're made out of the exponential function e to the x. And the exponential function is really easy to differentiate. So these two functions, cosh and cinch, will similarly be easy to differentiate. And just like in trigonometry, we can take different combinations of sine and cosine, only now we can do it for hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. So the hyperbolic tangent, or tanch, is exactly what you would think it is, hyperbolic sine divided by hyperbolic cosine. And if you want, we can rewrite this. Well, that hyperbolic sine, that cinch, that's e to the x minus e to the minus x all over 2. That's just the numerator, right? And then I'm going to divide by, so I'll just flip the cosh to divide by it. That'll be times 2 over e to the x plus e to the minus x. And so these over 2s cancel, and you get e to the x minus e to the negative x divided by e to the x plus e to the negative x. All right, so similarly, you can define the hyperbolic cotangent right below, the hyperbolic secant function, and the hyperbolic cosecant function. Um, these, I'm actually not 100% sure what the most common pronunciation of these last three are. I suppose it's coth, sech, and cosech. But in any event, the three most important ones are cinch, cosh, and tanch. 
Um, so this first note that's in these printed notes, these functions are not about trigonometry. That's true. Um, it also says they're not about angles. That's kind of true. It's at least not about angles in the way um, uh, trig functions are about angles. That's, that's true. These functions are, as I said before, they're built around e to the x. Um, so the second note just sort of says, oh, these functions act like sine and cosine, which is why we name them this way, but they don't really tell you how they act like sine or cosine. So let me just make a couple little notes. None of these are important for your homework or your quizzes, um, but how is cosh, which again, I'll remind you, is this lovely combination of e's. It's e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. How is this like cosine? Right. Well, one property that cosine has that makes it feel like this guy is cosine is even. That is, the cosine of a negative input just equals the cosine of that unnegative input. So this is saying cosine is even. And if you check over here, you can check that the hyperbolic cosine, the cosh of negative x, if I plug in negative x everywhere I see an x, so that becomes e to the negative x, plus e to the negative negative x, so that becomes a positive, hey, that's just cosh again. So cosh is also even. That's one thing that they have in common. Um, you can check that for cinch, like sine, um, the hyperbolic cinch is odd. Here's another reason that um, these two, these pairs of functions, cosh and cinch, are supposed to remind us of sine and cosine. For sine and cosine, maybe I'll plot these in red, right? If I say x is equal to the cosine of some angle and y is equal to the sine of some variable, and I plot all these x and y values, I trace out a circle, right? I trace out this unit circle where x squared plus y squared equals 1. If you do the same thing for cosh and cinch, you don't trace out a circle. You trace out something um, way more interesting in some sense. Um, you trace out Oh, let's see. Um, uh, I gotta see. Yeah, you trace out not a circle, but a hyperbola if you use cosh and cinch. So this would be x is the hyperbolic cosine of some number, and y equals the hyperbolic cinch of some number then the equation for this particular hyperbola you're tra um, tracing out is x squared minus y squared equals 1. And this is a really good reason, um, <coughs> excuse me, this is a really good reason why the uh, why we refer to these two functions that, that trace this curve out. It kind of looks like a circle when you write down the equation for it, but the, mi the plus has been turned to a minus. That's really why we think of these as a new type of cosine and sine. And um, over on our circle picture, right, with cosines and sines in blue, this number theta that I'm plugging in refers to this, usually we think of it as an angle, right? But we can also think of theta as being related to the swept out area. Well, that is what's going on with the hyperbolic sine and cosine. There's this kind of, if you pick a point here, there's this kind of swept out area um, that that uh, this theta refers to. Okay, that's all just sort of an extra bit of knowledge. I'm going on and on about why we call these two things a cosine-like thing, a cosh, and a sine-like thing, cinch. And there's a couple reasons here. One, they have the even and odd properties, and two, Rather than giving us circles, they give us a closely related thing called a hyperbola. Okay. So here we have some information about um, uh, just what these graphs of these functions look like. 
And so plotted here in blue in the middle of your screen is a graph of cinch. And it kind of makes sense when you really pause to think about it that cinch would have this appearance that's sort of bounded by these two curves, one half e to the x and one half e to the negative x, right? Cinch again looks like e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2. And so what's going on here? Well, one thing you can note is that as x gets really, really big and to the right, um, the values of cinch of x, right, let me just sort of work this limit a little bit. I'll break this up into this is e to the x over 2 minus e to the negative x over 2. Well, as x is getting really, really large, e to the negative x, that's 1 over e to the x, so this starts to look like 1 over infinity. This piece starts to look like 0. And so we can see that in the graph above. As we plug in x values that are getting really, really big, our cinch graph starts to look like the green 1 half e to the x graph. Similarly, as x gets really, really negative, this behavior kind of flips. The e to the x thing will now be e to the negative x, and it'll start to go to zero, and our cinch graph will look like the red graph below. Um, the hyperbolic uh, cosine function, cosh, looks like, kind of looks like a parabola. This is, again, the formula for this is e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. Okay, so there's some basic information about Kosh. Let's get on to um, uh, maybe plugging some stuff in, right? If really we, you guys were required to take basically a course on trigonometry, although I guess we call it pre-calculus, um, where you study cosine and sine and all their properties, really there could be, maybe even should be, a whole class on hyperbolic trigonometry. And this would be, example one would be a type of question you might see in there. Let's just practice manipulating the expression for Kosh and plugging in things into this expression that aren't too terrible. So they remind us what hyperbolic cosine is right there, but we're not dealing with the hyperbolic cosine of x we're dealing with the hyperbolic cosine of 2x. So this would look like e to the 2x plus e to the negative 2x all over 2. And now I want to plug in the natural log of 3 into this function. So this will be the hyperbolic cosine of 2 times natural log 3. And before we go, so let me show you what we could do. I could just plug this in. Everywhere I see an x in my expression above, I could write this as e to the 2 log 3 plus e to the negative 2 natural log 3. And I might think, oh, that's probably as good as I can get it. But it turns out, by appealing to our recent knowledge and comfort with E's and natural logs, we can actually simplify this a little bit. What I'm going to do is say, hey, this 2 natural log 3, I can use a power rule and say that's equal to the natural log of 3 squared. And this one here, that's equal to the natural log of 3 to the negative 2. So by using that power rule, I can rewrite the top left portion of the numerator as e to the 9, oops, sorry, I said that wrong, as e to the natural log of 9 plus, and then over there I'm going to have e to the natural log of 3 to the negative 2 is 1 over 9, and all of that is over 2, and I love to see e's to natural logs because they just cancel. And now I'm left with 9 plus 1 over 9, all over 2.
and I can even keep that a nice fraction. 9 plus 1 over 9, let's see, 9 is 81 over 9, so that's 82 all over 9 times 2. So if I want to simplify that, that's 41 over 9. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so I plugged into this function what we would normally think of as a kind of strange number, 2 times the natural log of 3, and I got like a nice whole number out. This isn't too different from taking a regular weird trig function like cosine and plugging in a weird input like pi over 4 to get an output you can actually write down. Okay, so some important identities that just gets just get squished down to the left over here. Some facts about cosh and cinch. Evidently when you add cosh and cinch they all simplify and you get e to the x. You might wonder well, why is this true? This you can check. It really does just happen. It falls out by writing out what cosh is and by writing out what cinch is and then breaking up everything and collecting like terms. So I'll just write a little bit here and then I'll erase this. Right, I have two of these terms, so when I add them together I get one of those, that's where this e to the x come from, and then these terms cancel. So that's where this identity comes from. <clears throat> if like your trig identities, these few hyperbolic trig identities are annoying to remember, they really come from knowing what cosh and cinch mean. I'll leave the second one for you guys to check, that the hyperbolic cosine of x minus the hyperbolic sine of x is e to the negative x, and it's this last one that is a really important one. Do you ever need to deal with cosh and cinch? be it for a future math course or a future STEM course in general, this identity is one you want to make sure you know. It's very close to the regular trig identity, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, but when you're dealing with hyperbolic trig functions, it's cosh squared minus cinch squared equals 1. So let's see why this one is true. It's really just from algebra cosh squared, that's e to the x, plus e to the negative x, all over 2, that's squared, minus, and now I'm going to write out what cinch is, e to the x plus, oops, I said I was going to write out cinch and I made a mistake, e to the x minus e to the negative x, all over 2, squared. And one thing you can do right away is you can get rid of those over 2's and bring them out front. 1 over 2 squared, that's just a 1 over 4. In fact, that second 1 over 4 I can omit altogether if I pull that 1 fourth out of everything. And so what I'm going to do is just foil out both terms. So e to the x squared, first with the first, is e to the 2x, and then I'll have plus 2 e to the x, e to the negative x, and then plus e to the negative 2x, and then minus e to the 2x minus um, 2 e to the x, e to the negative x, and then the last one will be plus e to the negative 2x. And so a lot of canceling happens. The first bit of canceling that happens that we should always be happy to do is this e to the x times e to the negative x. Don't forget your exponent rules. right? You can add those two exponents that have the same base, and you'll get e to the 0. So this is just the number 1. So that's just 2 times 1. Similarly over here, this is just the number 1. And then what's nice, if you distribute this minus sign that I have floating around um, right here, squiggled in blue, this e to the 2x will cancel with this minus e to the 2x, 
this e to the minus 2x will cancel with this minus e to the 2x. So if you think about all the terms that are going to go away, those blue underlined terms go away, and all I'm left with when I do this inside here is just 1 minus minus, I'm sorry, 2 minus minus 2. And so when I clear away all my algebra, all I get here is a giant 2 plus 2. Now if I remember that 1 fourth out front, this all simplifies to 1. Okay, so here's sort of the best news about uh, hyperbolic cosine and sine. Their derivatives are really easy to compute. So let's just see. Here, here over on the left is a bunch of derivative rules, and they basically look like all of our old rules, except the two starting ones are even easier in hyperbolic world. The derivative of cinch is cosh. Okay, we can remember that. But the derivative of cosh, it's not negative cinch, it's just cinch. So sometimes when you're taking a bunch of derivatives, it's really natural to forget, oh, is the derivative of sine negative cosine, or is the derivative of cosine negative sine? One of them gets a negative. When it comes to hyperbolic sine and cosine, neither one gets a negative. And so just to show you that this doesn't come from anywhere, let's check this one. Why is this the formula? Well, the derivative of cosh of x, again, I'm just going to write out what cosh means. It's 1 half e to the x plus 1 half e to the negative x. And now I'm going to take a derivative. And derivatives are really nice to to take when it comes to exponentials, the derivative of 1 half e to the x is 1 half e to the x. And now that this last one, I'm going to get plus 1 half e to the negative x times the derivative of negative x, so times negative 1. And what I'll get there is 1 half e to the x minus 1 half e to the negative x. And this is exactly what we called the hyperbolic sine. Okay, so let's try a differentiation example that involves cosh and a couple other things. Um, this example, example 2, involves the natural log um, and this other function 4x cubed. So let's just practice this using some of these derivative rules from above. So the derivative of this function will be the derivative of the outermost function. So the derivative of cosh is just cinch. We leave the inside functions alone. Times the derivative of natural log of 4x cubed. And so we're going to have to differentiate that guy. So I still have my cinch of natural log of 4x cubed times, and the derivative of natural log is 1 over. And now my last chain rule, the innermost function, gets a derivative. I've got to do a derivative of 4x cubed. So when that's all said and done, I get this expression times. 1 over 4x cubed times 12x squared. This last bit we can simplify a little bit. That'll be the cinch of the natural log of 4x cubed times 12 divided by 4 is 3, and I'll have an over x. I will point something out. This is a great way to practice differentiating. This is all correct, but something that's that should occur to you right here is we have a cinch and we're plugging a natural log into cinch. So that stuff I just underlined in orange can likely be simplified even more because remember cinch is made up of e's 
and E's love to get rid of natural logs, their inverses. So we could probably simplify that orange stuff. Really, that orange stuff is one half E to the natural log of something, 4x cubed, minus E to the negative natural log of 4x cubed. And I'm going to rewrite that first e to the natural log of 4x cubed. I'm going to leave it alone. But this second e, I'm going to use my power rule, right? That negative 1 out front, I can bring as a power. So that'll be 1 over 4x cubed. And now I can kill the e's in the natural logs, and I'll have 1 half 4x cubed minus 1 over 4 x cubed. So if you want, you can replace this here for that term, and maybe write your answer as 1 half 4x cubed minus 1 over 4x cubed, all times 3 over x. And I can distribute that stuff around a little bit. I'll get 3 halves times 4x cubed over x is a 4x squared minus 1 over 4x to the fourth. Again, this final way that I wrote my answer, I'm not saying it's better. I'm just acknowledging that you can write your answer this way. Right? I do just want to alert you to the fact that whenever you're plugging a natural log into a hyperbolic trig function, it might be worth seeing what cancels. In fact, if I went back to the beginning of this function, the beginning of this example, this function, I probably could have wrote differently because I have a natural log plugged into a cosh. Before I even differentiated, I could have probably worked that out and canceled away some stuff so that there's no E's left. But okay, enough with that example. Let's try this one. Oh dear gosh. The take a derivative of this weird comp composition of the arctangent of the hyperbolic sine of x. So this is actually a really good place where you might want to pause the video and give this example a shot yourself. And then resume the video to see if how your work compares with my work. Okay, so I'm assuming you're ready for us to work through this together. And so the derivative here, let's call it dy dx, well, I've got to take a derivative of the outside function. I've got to differentiate arctan. And the derivative of arctan is 1 over 1 plus whatever was inside the arctan function squared. So this will be hyperbolic sine of x all squared. And then times the derivative of hyperbolic sine. That's my chain rule. And this I'll have as 1 over 1 plus cinch squared of x times, and the derivative of cinch is easy, it's cosh. And so my final answer, maybe I can leave it like this, is cosh of x divided by 1 plus cinch squared of x. So this is an answer that shows uh, whoever's reading this work, that shows that, that, that reader you know how to take a derivative of this stuff. It might be worth exploring to see, hey, maybe I can rewrite some of this stuff, maybe using some hyperbolic trig identities or something, just to see if this can be made to look a little bit different or simpler. And it turns out it can remember the fundamental um, hyperbolic trig identity, which is cosh squared of x minus cinch squared of x equals 1. So this 1 that I see down in this denominator, I can replace with this expression. So if I want to, I can leave my cosh of x as the numerator, and then in the denominator, I'll have Instead of 1, I'll write it as cosh squared of x 
minus cinch squared of x. And then I still have that plus cinch squared of x. And now these two will cancel. And so I can rewrite this fraction. This is actually cosh of x divided by cosh squared of x. And of course I can cancel that one of those coshes from up top and one in the denominator, and I get one over cosh of x, which I believe we were calling sech, the hyperbolic secant of x. So what did we just find? We found that the derivative of the arctan of hyperbolic sinh of x was the hyperbolic secant of x. Oh my goodness. Here's another one. Take a derivative of this fraction. So again, to practice differentiating this stuff, I really, I am going to just apply the quotient rule. So this should equal the derivative of the top, which is hyperbolic sine, times the bottom, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom. And the derivative of that bottom is, well, the derivative of one is zero, the derivative of cinch is cosh. And all of that is divided by the denominator squared. So again, what I've written here in this dark shade of purple shows my readers that I know how to use the quotient rule and I know how to differentiate cosh and I know how to differentiate cinch. But let me see now if I can distribute some of this stuff to see if anything cancels. So in the numerator, if I distribute that cinch, I'll have a cinch of x plus cinch squared of x minus cosh squared of x, all divided by that silly denominator, one plus cinch of x all squared. And here's where, just like whenever you see a cosine squared plus sine squared, if you see a hyperbolic cosine or sine squared, plus or minus the other one squared, you should think of our fundamental hyperbolic trig identity, which is cosh squared minus cinch squared equals one. And over here in the numerator, we almost have that. We have cinch squared minus cosh squared. So if I multiply this fundamental identity by negative one, then I get that. And so what I get to do in this is I get to replace some of that numerator. That's cinch minus one. And it's all over. Um, I'll rewrite that a little bit in the denominator. Cinch of x plus one, all squared. Now, are there other ways to maybe rewrite this? Maybe, but I think that's a good place to stop this particular example. All right, so you should again try this one. Give it a pause so that you can work it out, and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so let's see how this one maybe works out the derivative of what we're calling y, so that's going to be take a derivative of e to the negative x times cosh of x. And so I can use my product rule to say that's the derivative of e to the negative x plus e to the negative x times the derivative of cosh. So, so far this looks good. I would be tempted to leave our answer here. Um, and in fact, I think I will for this example. It might be worth thinking about, okay, so I've got negative e to the negative x. Maybe if you write out what cosh is, that's e to the x plus e to the negative x all over two. And then we have plus e to the negative x times e to the x minus e to the negative x all over two. Maybe we can distribute some of that stuff 
right? So I'll get, uh, when I do this term times this one, the x's in the, um, in the exponent combine to give me 0. So I'll get e to the 0, so that'll be a 1. But then I have that minus sign out front, so I'll have a minus 1. And then when I combine this guy, this whole thing out front, with this term, that'll give me a minus e to the negative 2x all over 2. And similarly, on my second piece, when I do a similar distributing, I'll get 1 minus e to the negative 2x all over 2. And if you're careful with your algebra here, this indeed does cancel a lot. Some of this cancels, and all you're left with is um, negative e to the negative 2x. Oh, this is a great question. Let's take a derivative of a very weird looking function. It involves cinch. Maybe you think that makes it weird. But um, maybe a better reason to think it's weird is it's not just the cinch function. It's cinch of x to the x power. How do we take a derivative of something like this? This is where we need to use ln to bring the power down. And the short phrase for this is we need to use logarithmic differentiation. So I now have the natural log of y will equal the natural log of this bizarre function, cinch of x to the x. I can bring that exponent down, and now I have this. So I am now going to differentiate this term and this term. So now I'm just going to do an x derivative. And hopefully we remember from section 4.3 how logarithmic derivatives work. The derivative of ln of y, that'll be y prime over y. And now the derivative of this stuff up there on the right, underlined in blue, I've got to use the product rule. So that'll be the derivative of x times the natural log of cinch of x plus x times the derivative of natural log of cinch of x. So, I'm going to switch back to orange now. y prime over y equals the natural log of cinch of x plus x times... All right, so now we've got to differentiate this mess over there. The derivative of ln is 1 over cinch times the derivative of cinch which is cosh. And when I have, um, I can rewrite this a little bit. This will be the natural log of cinch of x plus, if you think about what I have here, I've got like the hyperbolic cosine over the hyperbolic sine. Cosine over sine is cotangent. Co hyperbolic cosine over hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cotangent, if I want to give a shorter name to it. And so now I multiply everything by y, and I get this weird looking derivative, which is not a surprise, right? Because when you have functions as bases and powers, as we discussed, you get weird looking derivatives. My last step is I should tell you what this function y is in terms of x. That was my function um, cinch of x to the x power. And so now I have natural log of cinch of x plus x times cough of x. What a lovely derivative. 
Um, one note I do want to sort of scribble on here, right, I sort of made a big deal earlier about saying, hey, whenever you see hyperbolic stuff mixed up with logs, these might cancel. And so you might be wondering, um, does stuff cancel here? Does, uh, I'll just say, does this cancel in any way? And it's kind of particular, right? When you have the natural log inside of the hyperbolic function, things tend to cancel. But when you have like the natural log of one half e to the x minus one half e to the negative x, this is not going to cancel, right? There's not a logarithm rule that tells us how to easily handle the natural log of a difference. The natural log of a fraction breaks up into the difference of natural logs, but we're not plugging a fraction into this log, we're plugging a subtraction in. So there's not much we can do to cancel this stuff. Okay, so here's a bunch of uh, uh, mumbo jumbo about where you might see this. Um, it is true that when you see expressions like the square root of one plus x squared, um, if you want to integrate, which means add up information about that function, turns out hyperbolic fun trig functions um, come into play. Just like regular trig functions come into play when you want to think about information relating to square roots of one minus x squared. Anyways, there's a whole lot of fascinating places um, where hyperbolic functions come into play. Uh, there, they provide us with a rich example of geometry behaving in very, very different uh, ways than we're used to. In fact, if you want some, excuse me, if you want something interesting to Google and look at some other videos on, you might want to just look up um, what's called the hyperbolic plane. Right? And the word hyperbolic here, it is being used in a way that's similar to the way we used it in this lecture note um, discussion. But there's actually sort of two models of this. There's the uh, Poincaré disk model And there's what they call an upper half plane model. Anyways, these are all just a bunch of fancy words. I bet Numberphile or Vihart has some interesting videos that involve these words. They're just kind of fun to watch. And they may not actually, you may not see the hyperbolic functions we talked about in this video coming. Like, um, you may not see them being used in the videos you watch. But if you want to do geometry in what's called the hyperbolic plane, if you actually want to compute stuff, like how long lines are in this setting, then cinch and cosh and tanch and setch pop up all over the place. All right, I'm going to stop this video here. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're continuing to do well.